So as we feared, uh, we ran low on firewood this year for this maple season. We are uh, like mid to late season here and it has been an exceptional season. And I knew with the amount of taps we put in, I knew if we had an exceptional season, we would be uh, short on the firewood we had reserved for the, for the evaporator. And um, it was an exceptional season and, and here we are. I, I went to, the, to my local sawmill a few days ago, got two bundles of slab wood. Slab wood, hardwood slab wood is generally a mix of many different hardwoods. And knowing that this wood was not seasoned, I know it was just processed in the past probably two weeks, I knew that uh, I had to be selective. I did my best to select uh, two bundles that were as strong on ash, ash firewood as possible because I know ash, it grows very dry compared to other species and it dries very quickly. And in this unique time that we live in, a lot of the ash is dead already. So what I want to show, uh, first of all, the reason I want to show this is when someone's struggling with performance on their evaporator, like nearly 100% of the time, we can narrow it down to their firewood, to the, to the quality of their firewood. Green firewood doesn't burn. It doesn't burn in your wood stove. It doesn't burn in your evaporator. Um, so what's interesting as I go through this bundle of slabs, there's many different species. I see, I see yellow birch. I see ash. I'm, I'm sorry, I see beech. I see, here's some maple. There's some ash up there. There's some more beech. Um, all of it on the end grain looks nice and seasoned. It, it looks like it's checked and it looks like it's ready to burn. So what I wanna do is experiment by just cutting a log section off of a few different species and see what we find for moisture. And I don't have a moisture meter. Um, I'm not fully on board with moisture meters because the reason is, first of all, a moisture meter is a, is a electrical device where you stick two prongs in the end of the wood. My gripe with it is the further I work those prongs into the wood, the higher the moisture reading I get. So it's a, it seems a little bit arbitrary. Um, I, I, I can tell by looking at them, and that's what, that's what I want to show, and I think the camera is going to show it. If, if so this, you don't feel like it's representative of the entire log. That's it's just representative of that surface. Yeah, and, and like I said, what bothers me is the further I stick the, the prongs in, the more contact those two prongs are, are making with the wood, the higher the moisture reading it gives me. So um, it's, it's a helpful tool in some cases. You know, and another thing, like I don't always remember when I'm talking to people that not everyone has extensive experience with firewood. I grew up in a wood heated house. The f we didn't have a, a, we had a gas furnace, but it just didn't run. My dad always kept ahead of the firewood supply. I grew up burning firewood. When I built my first house, it was, it just came natural to me that I was gonna heat it with firewood. It's just what we do. But a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people, the only time they use firewood is for, uh, maple season. So I sometimes forget that a lot of people don't have, you know, a lot of deep experience with it. So my experiment is today to be, I'm, I'm going to grab a couple of like somewhat similar sized pieces of, of wood from, uh, from different species and cut a log off of each and see if we get into a, a more, a higher moisture content. And I think it's going to be visible. Judging by how heavy some of this stuff is, it's pretty green. It should be visible. So I think we should start by just cutting a few. Let's, uh, let's cut this yellow birch first, maybe. We'll cut a 17 inch log off of it. So here is the yellow birch. There is the end that was visible before. You can see it's all, it's, it's checking pretty well. It looks dry. All outside of here, it looks and feels dry. Now here's what tells the story. So if we look at this right here, this is yellow birch, this is dry, and this is moisture. 
So what's interesting when you look at this is you can see the moisture is escaping out the sides of the wood, but not out the bark. So that is a core of water right there. That is not gonna burn. That is gonna be a stubborn piece of wood to try to burn. Don't even try to burn that. Let's look at this beach. So here, this piece of beach, for whatever reason, whether the, the logs sit longer, sat longer, or beach lets the moisture escape quicker, this appears to be pretty dry. You can see it's got a thorough color all the way through, just like it's raw and was all checked. The inside, not checked, but apparently very dry. Let's look at a little bit bigger piece of beach. Perfect. So once again, big piece of beach here. Seems to be dry nearly all the way through. There might be a little vein right there that's, that's holding some moisture. But this is ready to burn. This piece of beach right here, that's a big piece of wood. That is ready to burn. Let's cut into this maple. This is a spot that's gonna be hard to see, but you can see there's a, a, a thin rim of dry wood, but most of it's wet. And here's some even uh, partially rotten, punky wood, but that's moisture. This maple will not burn. Since we know that this maple here was moist on the small side, and I see it's got some pretty dozy material there, let's just try a different piece of maple. So here, taking a look at a completely different maple log, the raw end looks dry and checked. 17 inches in, you can see the absolute uniform drying pattern. Looks like about a half inch to five eighths of an inch band of dry firewood on the exposed edges. Absolutely moist on the inside, all the way up to the bark. This is a, a good visual of how bark disallows evaporation um, in your firewood. Now let's take a look at this ash. Very big log. Let's take a section off of here and take a look at it. And here is why I trust ash when I'm in uh, desperate times for firewood. Big log, absolutely dry all the way through. In fact, so dry that you can actually see the the dry uh, porosity that used to carry moisture in the small part of the rings. Absolutely bone dry material. What does the other end look like? This was the raw end. As you can see, it was checked just like all the other logs. The beach, if you notice the beach, even though it appeared to be pretty dry, it didn't have that, uh, that porosity visible on it at all. So I guess allow yourself to learn every time you handle your firewood, every time you cut, every time you split. Watch what's going on. The whole reason um, I was kind of sparked to do a video on this firewood is because I couldn't believe when I first started unbundling this, I couldn't believe when I made my first cut into a beech log, I couldn't believe how much moisture was in that first cut. But now, as you can see, we just cut two different beech logs and they're dry and ready to burn. So that's all important information for me as I start consuming this firewood. It's, it's very important to, to know what's going on with my wood. So um, pay attention to what you're using and make sure you're not trying to burn anything that has that moisture in it. This is what it boils down to. This is what it boils down to.